On today's episode, we're taking on one of Queensland's toughest four-wheel drive destinations. But this time, we're on a mission to make a difference. We're not just going to wheel its hardest tracks, we're also going to clear them of rubbish. That's right folks, the four-wheel drive 24-7 community is cleaning up the Glasshouse Mountains. Now, a special mission deserves a special vehicle, and thankfully, I've got the perfect rig. What a day, look at that, sun's out, blue skies, more to the point. Brand spanking new D-Max. I have done 122 kilometres on the blacktop. First time taking it off-road. Talk about excited. I cannot wait to see how the new model D-Max is going to perform. Now, the boys have given me a pin. They should be just up here somewhere. And knowing them, they'll probably be late. But we'll see how we go. Oh, let's get into it. Sure enough, the rest of the convoy is waiting up ahead. Have a go of that. Hey. <laughs> I like what you've done with it. Have a go of this, boy. Get off it. Don't touch it. Get off it. Leave That's, it alone. It's way too nice for you, know, mate. Yep, this brand spanker is Isuzu's newest creation, the 2021 D-Max. It's a major upgrade to the D-Max line, and I've got this beast tricked out with my favourite kit, including canopy, bar work, muddies, light bar, and of course, a suspension lift. Let me tell you, I simply cannot wait to put it in low range for the very first time. Tune in next Thursday for a full run through of the new bus, where I'll show you how I've modified it and why. Far so what out. do you say, point me at hard track, 100% confident. What a way to break it in. It is, it is. <laughs> if we can do this, we can do anything. Absolutely. You no. just try and keep up, that's all I ask. You can just try and keep up. Follow in my suit. We've got a bunch of top blokes joining us for our glass house cleanup mission, starting with Ruben from DMW in his Monster Chopped 200. This time he's got it kitted out with a full-sized canopy extension. Next up is Nathan from Fulcrum Suspensions, wheeling a really capable dual cab, and of course he's keeping a firm eye on the D-Max to make sure the new suspension they fitted works exactly as expected. Leading the convoy is our good mate Jesse, who swapped out his winch truck for the keys to Daryl, and is gonna lead us around the tracks and show us some spots that really need some cleaning up. The Glasshouse Mountains is hugely popular with four-wheel drivers, but unfortunately, with that comes a whole bunch of rubbish left behind by a careless minority. That's exactly why we've got on board with the Respect the Bush campaign, and we're gonna show you we can make a change that will help keep our favourite tracks open for good. We've got 40 Respect the Bush bags, and our plan is to get to some of the harder to reach destinations in the Glasshouse and pick up some rubbish. Now, the Glasshouse needs our help. There's a lot of rubbish last time we came, so we put it down as a pretty good excuse if you ask me to come down here and clean up the bush. So I'm pretty excited about that. With our first track up ahead, we're soon knocking some air out of the tyres and I'm taking my jewelers down to 21 PSI as we get ready to take on some big rock steps and scrabbly ruts. Here we go boys, Glasshouse House Classic, Watson's Road. Yeah, this is a great little track mate. I love coming up here, I've done it a few times now. Um, you know, hopefully find some rubbish up here and also some spectacular driving. Of a spot to be taking a brand new D-Max, mate. I oh, know, I was just thinking that. Um, yeah, so you like your panels or how are they going for you? Mate, we'll be right, don't you worry about it. Uh, Jesse, on standby, please. Yeah, I might need you on standby. I can't say I've actually ever driven this with no lockers, so, you know, might need a bit of help. Something tells me old Daryl will get you to the top, mate. Yeah, I've got faith in him. Daryl might be loud, leaking and obnoxious, but this budget build sure does get the job done. That's a nice drive, Jesse. Here we go. This is a committing little challenge. Not so little. Nothing to it. Sooty. <laughs> now this one. Holy dooly. You just got to take it down bit by bit, like bite one little piece yeah, off before you look at it. Yeah, don't think about the next bit. No, don't look at the next bit. That's just one bit at a time. Big and steep and very committing. Once you get up, you sort of just want to feed it a bit. Just. <laughs> there's, another, there's another challenge right there. Does not give up. Okay, it's my turn. And this is the first real challenge in this vehicle with just a couple of hundred k's on the clock. Drive it. Drive it. Yes! Whoa. Go to the D-Max! Tree! What a weapon! <laughs> I nearly hit you! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> he got so excited in the tree! <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that was bad! What an absolute beast! <laughs> nearly hit a tree. <laughs> the moral of that story is never celebrate too early. Now the 200, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> You'll be trying to drive that rock step and this one at the same time. <laughs> As Ruben gets the 200 lined up, 
we grab a few rubbish bags and start to clean up around the track. The message is pretty simple. If we all pull out some of the rubbish every time we go wheeling, together we can absolutely return our bushland to how it should be. Rubens 200 is chassis extended by 750mm with a GVM upgrade that gives him a huge carrying capacity. But as we've seen in Cape York, the big rig Give is up. still pretty damn good. a bit of a drive. Oh, oh what easy. step! <laughs> easy. What step! Well, you've got to hand it to the DMW boys. This car is built well and is just eating up the tracks. Yeah. I've got a feeling you don't see too many 200s yeah. taken on tracks like this. Oh, no. <laughs> Nathan's gone for the low and slow approach here. And look at that. He's barely spun tire. That's ridiculous. No, no way. What are you all worried about? That's the one. Drive it, drive it. Oh, yeah. Three. Yeah. Well, that's the first challenge out of the way, and a few bags collected already. We're on to the next one. In case you can't tell, I'm absolutely frothing to have a new D-Max. I've made a couple of subtle tweaks to it. I've changed a few bits and pieces. I've moved back my Max Tracks holder. I've got a little, in the canopy, a little tray so I can put some recovery gear and bits and pieces up. There's a few other little tweaks that I've done to it, but on the whole, I've kept it the same. One thing I definitely haven't changed, still run it in my Bridgestone MTs. I tell you, over all my four-wheel drives, I'm talking Shorty, the GU, a few D-Maxes, run these same tyres, and it might, it might blow you away to find out, I have never, in all the years that I've run them across all those different four-wheel drives, I've never once had a puncture. Says something, doesn't it, as to just how tough they are. So, of course, when it came time to build this bad boy up, that's one thing, it definitely wasn't changing. But now, though, oh my goodness, this hill just keeps going. <laughs> how good is it? The upper half of this track features this scary off-cambered rock step. You can either try and hug the left bank or commit to the step. But if you get it wrong, panel damage is on the cards. What would Daryl do? That's a hell of a line. Jesse's going for the hero line here, right up the step <laughs> and... Oh. So close! He's got it. He's got what? It. He's nailed it. He's got it. Oh, that's unfair. A lot of things I like about my mate, Sean, one of them is that he's a very optimistic four-wheel driver. We've just seen Jesse come up here in an unlocked GQ and just made it look super easy. Sean, however, is going to try and straddle this rut all the way up. I reckon he's got Buckley's. <laughs> we'll see how he goes. <laughs> right, mate! Straddling the rut here saves the possibility of the back of the vehicle slipping off the step and into the bank. But to get the left wheel up requires some very careful Looks steering. Looks a bit different now, eh? It does, it does look a little bit concerning. Shauna seems to have gone very quiet all of a sudden. Oh, look at that. That is so sick. There well you go. Done. Shauna's nailed it. And Sooty's panels live to see another day. I officially eat my words. I have a feeling he got lucky there. I'm putting that down to luck and Jesse's ability to spot anyone through anything. Pretty much had zero to do with the driver. That's pretty sketchy. <laughs> now, this is literally my first track in the new D-Max and I'd like to keep it straight. So I'm opting for another line here, but Rube has decided he wants a crack at the hard line. Oh, I swear you don't want that to happen. I mentioned before how you can slide off the rock step into the left bank, and you can see it oh, happening hey. right there. Hey. Ruben's got no choice yes. now but to commit, and that's exactly what he does. Well done, mate. Oh, wow! Oh, holy heck! Oh my god! Oh. Oh. I just realised oh. I was standing in the I wrong did, spot. Did a <laughs> so glad that walked up. When I get real nervous, like no no words come out, just like weird high pitched noises. Like <laughs> I was like, and then I block my ears when it gets really scary. <laughs> the 200 is through the hardest part of the track, but he's still not out of the woods yet. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Holy sh. Boca. Just a little a bit way. Right. Hey? A bit left. She's unsettled, boys. She's unsettled. <laughs> That's easy. Straight well, up. What do you reckon, folks? You seen a bigger rig take on the glass house? If you have, I'd well, love to hear about it. 
You're part of the Full Sand 4x4 club. <laughs> We've got four members now. It's pretty full on. Oh, well, when that was uh, sort of tipping there, like the, yeah, the little freckle went a 100 mile an hour. <laughs> yeah, you're a loose unit, Ruben. I would have done the same, mate. That's, wow. That's uh, well piled, mate. You're going to be doing well to get it through here as well. It's quite, it's quite tight, tight, but we'll see what happens, eh? No, very good. Thank you. Nathan's going for the controlled approach here, but it's touch and go. Ooh. Steer. Steer. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Commit to it. Commit. Commit. Oh. That's it. Good drive. Woo. That is pretty hard. too easy. That's insane. You've got to commit to that, and it feels really unnatural, but you can't turn till you almost hit that tree. That's the only advice we gave Nathan, and um, a bit of white knuckles going on, but he made it look pretty good. The top of this track has some scrubbly rock ledges to clamber up, and a bit of right boot is definitely required. That's it, commit. With Watson's Road done and dusted, Jesse's topping up the auto fluid before we point the Forbies at another Glasshouse Classic. This one's seen a lot of damage at the hands of a few littering grubs, unfortunately. And as we head down the entrance to the main challenge, Jesse's opted for a bit of a creative line <laughs> that hasn't quite paid off. What's he done? <laughs> this is very exciting. Jesse! What has happened here? Great line choice, mate. Yeah, mate Perfect yep, execution. Yep. No, no, you can drive yeah. it from there, mate. I think it was a stitch up you told me to come over here. <laughs> myself a mischief. You, you know the best thing about this is you take the roll cage out and the 38s yeah, 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 and the yeah, turbo yeah. four point eight. Suddenly you see the, the rear the winches. Talent and all. is not actually embedded in the human. No, I it's know. more. <laughs> I understand this, mate. Look, as someone who obviously hasn't spent a lot of time in the saddle. Ah, mate, it's just a classic line, a classic case of you putting your foot down on the wrong spot. You cooked it. <laughs> Full yeah. cook. Well, what do you want to do here, mate? We can winch you backwards, push you forwards, or leave you here. Oh, I can just give me a bit of a rock. I yeah, we can give you a rock. Reckon, yeah, I reckon you might even. Yeah, you maybe, could. maybe. We've got a couple of big strapping lads here, and yeah. me. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna do the roof push. No, it's on there. I hope the roof doesn't come off of the rock. There you go. We got him. Yes. Yep. Rock him. Yes. There he goes. <laughs> There we go. That's a, that's we, a big we just added four horsepower to Daryl. It's well, not be, hard to do, it's only got half a horse. Be careful. This is the. Oh, well executed. Look at that auto. Yeah. Look at Precision that. Precision driving. He's made up for it. Well done, mate. What's that he's dripping there? Is that a problem? No. Oh, it is a little bit. That's right okay. Daryl does that. The leg's horsepower out all the time. <laughs> good news is, Jesse does. I was a couple of beers come camp. Yeah, on. good man. Good man. What's that? Two beers? At least. All right, let's keep the count up. Keep the count up. I think so. Do you need spotting here, mate? Or are you good? I'm going to do the exact same line, but better. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, oh, mate. I thought you were going to kook it there. We're getting close to our next challenge now the notorious ball bearing track. But just getting to the start is a lot of fun. Let's see if Daryl can get up through that. That's, that looks pretty hectic. It does. I've, I've seen Jesse taking the easy approach. Easy or smart? He's making it look easy. Yeah, yeah, he does. It annoys me a little bit. It's making some noise up here, don't worry. I'll give you about 10 metres, mate, and I'll follow up behind you. I've got a, uh, I've got a factory diff lock in this bad boy. I'll push a button and we're good. With all the convoy up, it's time for the main event. Look, there's steep and then there's glasshouse steep, and ball bearing sure does deliver. Loose shaley rocks, big steps, I tell you, this is the sort of track that can change the colour of your underpants just like that. Mate, this is far out. I remember this. I know, I know, I'm excited. So, tell you what, what I'm doing, mentally, I'm breaking this down into small portions. Yep. This is my goal right now to get to here. That's a, that's a tough goal in That's future own. Graham. Yeah, he's gonna worry, worry about that. <laughs> Gonna get here first. It's it's quite a challenging track, yep. and one of the reasons we came here is pick up a bit of rubbish, up obviously. Yep. <laughs> this is a committing line for a brand spanking new DMX. It's I got, can't like, believe you're doing it. It's a bit, it's a bit out there, but look, we'll get up. You gotta watch your canopy on the tree. When I say we'll get up. <laughs> yeah, Jesse will spot you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no help yeah, at all. Yeah, you yeah. guys just go your own way. <laughs> all right, come on, let's get let's into this. Get, I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, Big Daryl is up first. I just hope Jesse has more luck going up than he did going down. Drive it like it's not your car. Now, of course, the GQ is unlocked, aside from an LSD, but so far, not stopping it. 
Right, where's he going? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Nice line, nice line. And then the square up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. settle down. I should get out of the way. He's got it. Well done. Well done. Yes. Yes, Daryl, that's why we love you. Rock yes. Right How good's that? How yeah, good's that? That's spectacular. Woo. That pressure. is champagne full driving at its absolute best. The pressure is on you now. Oh, no. <laughs> that sucks. I've got twice as many lockers as Daryl. Yeah, you do, you do. Oh, he's checking for damage. Definitely have to change that arm. It's like, I knew that would wreck it and it fully wrecked it now. Oh, so what are you saying? So you're, you're, dry, you're saying you're oh. hard on the gear, mate? Well, so, Jesse, that's... When I um, was doing my pre-trip inspection on Daryl, <laughs> I came across the left-hand rear lower trailing arm was bent. I believe Graham might have bent it. Me? Yeah. And we'll... I didn't want to change it, but they said no. What? And um, this obstacle... Did you see it before you, he got it? No, it was... I did not, the last Darryl, time I was in prime condition yeah. when you got it, Jesse. I, I don't know. Look, okay, it's possible that Sean and I might have been just a little rough on the gear last time we were here, but that's no excuse, Jesse. <laughs> hey, Jesse, it's good to see, mate, since you put that T-shirt on. Full send is living up to its name. Yeah, Mr. Wilde, you got a copy down there in Sydney? Yeah, I do, mate. Yeah. Are you, um, you're clear to come up the track, mate. Roger, Dodge. Good luck, mate. Yeah, good driving! Good driving! You've got this! Yep! He's gonna win. No lockers either, Sean, no lockers. Yeah, of course, mate. You see, Sooty's already struggling for traction up here. You can hear those tyres working. That bit there's a bit tricky, isn't it, getting around that rock? Oh, this is gonna be the scary bit. Yeah, on that rock. Is that it? Well, I'll be done. Yeah. Pulls in, pulls in. Yeah. Up we go. Yes. <laughs> Get him up here. Oh, no. Get him up here. Big bangs. <laughs> <Yeah -hoo. laughs> that was about as graceful as an elephant on roller skates. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> That's I was, sick. I was, uh, yeah, I told Jesse I wasn't going to use lockers, but I used them all. We have got a slight problem. What? We need to bring this. Back yeah, way. we're gonna do a bit of bush mechanics here, mate. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll we'll just sit in here if you like. Yeah. No, no. What's uh, what's this? Bit of lockers, mate. No, just put them on to see if they're working. They're oh, working. Oh, you they're didn't working. have them on when you're going up. No, obviously, it uh -huh. was pretty easy. Uh -huh. okay. The GQ isn't gonna make it to the top of this climb with a bent trailing arm, so we're gonna have to do the repair right here. We've soon got Daryl secured on the hill and Shawno's Rumba on hand to make a bit of a trackside fix. So what we've got here is a really bent lower control arm. Now. That may or may not have had something to do with me, but we might get into that right now. At the point now, though, where it's actually going to fold up completely, take out the shock, the spring, the whole lot, and collapse up underneath the vehicle if we try to go any further. So what we've got to try and do is fix it. That's actually a little bit more difficult than it seems because if Jesse rolls back now, of course, that tyre is going to go forward up underneath the vehicle and probably, as Jesse said, totally ruin our day. So as Jesse rolls back here so we can get into a better position, we're going to winch backwards and try and bring that diff back as, we, as Jesse comes back. It's quite a delicate operation, this. What do you reckon? Yeah, Good. ready to go. All right, let's give it a go. Yeah, keep winching. With Daryl on the side of the track, Jesse's got clean access to the trailing arm and soon has it removed. Well, this right here is a lower control arm for a uh, GQ patrol. And I'm no mechanic, but that is not supposed to be bent like that. So uh, Jesse's actually got it spare with him. He knows these things backwards. We'll space this one out, put a new one in, and that thing there is going to go in our rubbish bag. You don't want it, do you, Jesse? <laughs> After a bit of time on the tools, the new arm is in place and Daryl is ready to take on the top of the hill. Tell you what, pays to know your vehicle and the spares you need for it. We've got less than half the convoy up the hill, but as I said earlier, we're not just here to wheel. And after losing time to this repair, we're actually due to meet some helping hands at the trailhead. You see, we put the call out to our audience to join us for a clean up and they should be gathering right about now. That means we've got just enough time to get Daryl and Sooty to the top while the rest of us will have to save this track for tomorrow. Now, we were hoping that a couple of people might show, you know, four or five, but the turnout today is amazing. Four wheel drivers, young and old, have turned up ready to show that there's plenty of Aussies ready to lend a hand when it comes to cleaning up our tracks and campsites. We've all soon got a bag in hand and rubbish is being picked up left, right and centre. How good is this? It really gives you some hope for our tracks and we are so proud to have 
10,000 of these reusable bags out in the community and in the hands of top Aussie four-wheel drivers. Things will only change if we all lend a hand, and these folks are here to prove it. Well, mate, we put a call out. We got an hour's worth of notice for people. Look at all these legends that are showing up here. Big thank you, guys. <laughs> absolute, look at them go. absolute legends. And look, this what is what we take. Half an hour. Oh, if 45 that, minutes. If that, and that's the rubbish that came out of yep. just a little red, big red, and just this car park up the top here. So. Once again, folks, big thank you. Where can people get the bags, mate? Get them from the Snatch Clothing website. You get two bags, one for yourselves and one for the rubbish that you find on the tracks. And look, it only takes you a half an hour when you yeah, leave the campsite. absolutely. You get a pile of rubbish like this, and that's what's going to keep places like this, these tracks open, by doing the right thing. All right, I want to say a big thank you to you guys. Legends. Yeah, good on you. Absolute guys. legends. <laughs> one big tip, though, guys, when you do go camping, make sure you bring a bloke that does actually pick up rubbish. Not saying oh, anything. <laughs> I saw him just talking to the girls behind and not doing any rubbish pickups. Should we head to camp? All right, we'll pick Appreciate these up. Them. Yep. And um, you can grab your bags as well, folks, and um, they're recyclable. That's they a good are. thing. You can oh, use someone, them again. Someone did a good job. Yeah, that was me. Right. Was that you? Yeah, <laughs> all the heavy ones. With the clean-up done, it's well past time to roll out the swags and crack an iron jack. And so we make tracks to an absolute gem of a campsite overlooking the mountains. Would you look at this for a spot? What a cracker of a view. We found all about this private camp by asking around the locals, and I tell you, it pays to do your research. We're soon breaking out the canvas and getting ready for a bit of a storm to roll on through. That's right, Shauno's insistent on cooking tonight, and I tell you, this is a recipe you're never going to forget. First though, time for a little ice cold refreshment. It's been a heck of a day and taking a load off around the fire with a few good mates, well, that's what we live for. You are brilliant at putting wood on a fire, mate. Yeah, I'll tell you that's what. how you do it. That's it how you is. do it. Hey, I don't want anyone to look backwards because cool kids don't, but have a go at that view, will you? Glasshouse Mountains. Insane. To think we're on those tracks today. Something else. And here we are, campsite, fire, yep. cold iron jack. You know what? It's been, for me, it's been nearly seven months since driving tracks like that. And I've yep. got to say, I'm going to be honest with you now, around with the boys. Yep. A little bit nervous. It did show, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, always a good sense of accomplishment. You go to a place like that, wheel yep. tough tracks, yep. pick up a bit of rubbish. Yep. I mean, doing good all around. I'd, I'd like to think that that's become a, a bit of a mantra for people. Wheel and rubbish together. Like, yep. we're going wheeling, we're going camping, and we're picking up rubbish. How cool would that a be? A lot of people were today, they do, they do that already. Yep. So, so good to things see. Things are changing, mate. And speaking of so. things changing, yes. I'm cooking tonight, and I'm changing my recipe up a little bit. Um, it's going to be absolutely spectacular. I hope you guys have got strong stomachs and a bit of a sense of adventure. You know that rubbish you picked up today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be nothing like that. I'm going to finish this beer and I'll get right in. I need to really work myself up for this one tonight. It's going to yeah. be, oh, it's going to be absolutely Do we time. need to work ourselves up like yeah. <laughs> you beer Is that how that works? My round next, boys. All right, good school. <laughs> All right, it's time to get prepared. Turn the old camp lights on. This is a cool mod for anyone who's after cheap mods, and I reckon this will change your camping experience. Get yourself some camp lights. These ones here, the Terralume X1s. They cost about 30 bucks or even less than 30 bucks and look at the light you get and it transforms the camp. Now I can see what I'm doing. I reckon we get right in to cook it up a feed. How good is this? We're camped on a little bit of private property just outside the Glasshouse Mountains. Now today we drove some really hard tracks but more importantly we cleaned up a fair bit of rubbish out of the Glasshouse Mountains. Tonight I'm going to cook up a little bit of a feed. Now this is an exciting one. It's going to be stuffed breast with um, Tex-Mex cheesy it's gonna be really good. Did you say breast? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You heard it straight up. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Straight in. Look at it. You can't even reach. <laughs> How good's that? That's good with the oh, feed. Get it up nice and high, and especially when Graham's around. He hasn't been around for a while. Get that fridge up nice and. Oh, you got it. You figured it out. You figured there it out. There we go. Well, get your opinion about this. Do you like oh, breast? Cheers, bro. Yeah, I do like breast. Well, there you go. What about stuffed breast? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Never no, actually, look, look, yeah. look, this one's gonna be really good. It's like a cheesy Tex-Mex stuffed breast. Oh yeah. So yeah. first thing, let's get the stuffing sorted out now. This is a jalapeno. I've got some um, red rockets here as well. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so we want to chop all these up into sm small little pieces. Yep. And um, that's a Spanish onion. We're going to chop that up as well. Hola, come estas. I want all the little pieces to be small. At the end of the day, remember, you've got to be able to fit this inside the breast. So just nice little small pieces. I'm going to jump into the Mike Coleman. Here we go. Good fistful of cheese. Straight in. This is where this meal starts to get a bit exciting. I need a bigger bowl. Well, what, what yeah, I might do. A lot of people what, say that, but I think it's how you do, use your bowl. I might more put the stuffing into this there one. There you go. Now, here's a hot little tip for everyone back at home. 
if you're going to be stuffing breasts, you want to try and get the biggest, juiciest breast you can find. And um, the reason because if you get a really small one, you can't fit a lot of stuffing inside there. It's been my finding. Yeah, exactly right. So all you need to really do is, is get the fattest end of the breast. So gra grab one, grab one, yep. grab one. We're in this together. Be very careful with your knife. Now, all you want to do is yep. basically make an incision, a small one, about two centimeters at the back of the breast. So it's, it's inside, do not pierce the outside of it. Now, do the same, do the same. Go right down the end. I did. Did you get the blade in long enough? Yeah. Sometimes I find it. Yeah, your blade's yeah, not you long go. enough. Yeah. <laughs> you go. yeah. You gotta try and get it. Okay, now's a fun bit. Get your finger inside there. <laughs> okay. So what are you putting in there? You just want to finger that hole as much as you can, just to basically widen that gap up a fracco. Yep. And what you can do there is you can fit more stuff in it, obviously. So, so that's that's looking good actually. You, if you get that, <laughs> <you're looking. laughs> no, it's actually. <laughs> All right. So after you've tried, after you've cut that two centimeters wide at the front and the fattest end of the breast there, you want to try and widen that hole as much as you can. Now the key with that is. The wider the hole, the more stuffing you can fit in there. Yep. So basically, grab grab a bit of stuffing. This is um, all the chilies, the cheese, and you basically just want to stuff that breast. Really quite simple. So, well, it's actually not that simple. <laughs> you've got a bush. So you've done actually quite well because you're well, you've actually you've actually it's not got my first rodeo, bro. You've actually got that hole quite. Yeah, right. it's not my first rodeo, but you've got to get your. Oh, you do. Yeah, you do. Really Mine's way too tight. <laughs> gotta get it. <laughs> But here's the thing, don't be afraid of it. Yeah. And get your thumb in here. <laughs> Yours is actually going really well. Yeah. That's exactly what you want. That's yep. exa you, you're fitting a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> Good little technique as well at home if you're playing. Just <laughs> use your thumb and just push it down. Because you want to get the stuff in as far down the breast as you absolutely can. That is looking good. Yeah, I think that's really good. <laughs> no, put that I think that's... Do another one, start another one. I should start another one, yeah, yeah you're right. That's sensational. All right, we'll do a couple more. And yeah. then, then, then the key is we're gonna fry them up in the pan. Okay. And then actually get them in the camp oven, all side by side, put all the breast Bake together. Them up. And exactly right, Done. exactly right. Cut that up, we the cheese oh, yes, all it's all melted. it's gonna melt out, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put that in the heat, mate. We're gonna start nice heating up a bit of oil. How are you going? You got... Mate, I'm like a, I'm like a well oiled machine over here. Look at you. Actually, I've got to say, I've got to, I've got to hand it to you, Graham. You are surprisingly talented at doing this, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you'd be surprised. Yeah, you, well, well, I won't tell you how I figured it out. Boys. Oh, yeah, check a, this out. There's a, there's a little bit too much um, enjoyment okay. happening over here at the cooking. <laughs> you ever seen one of those before? <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, okay. what, what, what we're doing, mate, is check making some out, cheesy mate. stuffed chicken breasts. Just, air, air your beers, boy, and go on, boys. Oh, I could do it. Huh? Actually, you've got non chicken hands, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, oh, yes, please. I would love. Righto. I'll get you some beer. Thanks, bro. So just basically chucking those breasts in. Thanks, Reuben. That's good, mate. And there that's, you go. that's what we're dealing with tonight, that, mate. That is just magnificent. I know. I'm going to put a rock so in there for something. There we go. I've got there four go. in there at the moment. <laughs> we're just going to turn those around. What are you going to do here? Brown them off? Got, uh, brown them off, and then yep. I'm going to try and just stuff them in the pan. Yeah. And the, in the pot here and put it on the coals yep. for maybe like 10 40. minutes. Oh, mate. Those breasts are looking sensational. And they always do. I'm well, basically just chucking the rest of the stuff in on top. Now, that's, that's just something I made up on the spot here. But I reckon that'll work out quite well. That All looks that so good. It's actually looking really. Oh, you Holy put, heck! You put these guys in. Settle down. <laughs> keep me there. You'll be right. Damn, boy! I'm gonna Look give that to that. you. What we're we basically gonna do? Straight through the middle, through the thickest part of the uh, breast. Oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> I stuffed that one because it's all the way to the end. Look at that. That's actually quite tight, that one. <laughs> Look at that. Oh that that goodness. is what we're dealing with, folks. Can this I is just... exactly how it's supposed to turn out. Look at that. So you might be a bit shaky at the start, but we've come good at the end. That's, that's what we're dealing man. with. That is called the medallion of goodness. The medallion of goodness? Yeah. That is something else. Look at that. Look at I'm that. impressed with you. I think we need to bring the boys bring in. Bring the this boys in right now. I'm going to play it up for you and get there. That's how good. <laughs> <laughs> That is exactly what we're going for. A little love hearts of goodness. Fire out, boys. What do you reckon about Dude, this, eh? That is some that's some good breast. I've had great breasts before, but that, that is, is a that super is a fantastic moist. breast. It's yeah. Super moist. It means super it's cooked fantastic. It's extremely and I like the covering well. in the middle. Look at that. That, you, you that is unbelievable. Pay big dollars at a fancy restaurant, but we're here really in the glass house mountains, driving tough tracks and um <laughs> Pretty nice meals Mate, as well. Just a cracking day on. all around. It really is. I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna go and sit around the fire. I'm gonna enjoy you. Enjoy your breast and yeah. just and have a couple of beers. One more bit. <laughs> oh, oh, hang on. So am I. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Cheers, yum, boys. Yum, yum. Right yum, Stick around, folks, because tomorrow we're taking things to the next level.
In the morning light, the view around our campsite is looking pretty damn good. Southeast Queensland really is a mecca for off-road touring, with beaches and tough tracks all within a few hours drive. Today, we'll be heading back to give the rest of the boys a crack at Ball Bearing Hill, and later, we've got a plan to ramp up our cleaning efforts. After Sean's cooking last night, it's fair to say we could all use a break. So Ruben's jumping onto breakfast duties, so we've got a half a chance of making it to the tracks. All right, it's that time of day. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo, -hoo -hoo. some eggs. And if I'm correct, there'll be a couple of packets of bacon in here. Reuben has gone full gourmet this morning, combining steak and bacon into a brekkie wrap that'll put hairs on your chest. If that bacon came from Graham's fridge, there's a good chance it's actually tofu. It's not, it just tastes like bacon. <laughs> so just to double check it, Reuben, before you ruin the steaks, mate. That's the best breakfast I've had this year. That was amazing. With Brecky on board, it's time to break camp and get ready to see how these modern rigs compare to the older trucks on the Glasshouse's unforgiving tracks. Mate, packing up? Yeah. Good all to see. Up. Good to see, mate. All the boys are packing up now. We've got some tough tracks to drive today. Mate, I did notice you're rocking a different setup this time around. Yeah, decided to put the 1200 mini canopy on. Now, obviously, you've got the same locker box you had in Cape York, yep. but you just added the canopy. Yeah, yeah, that's because we're modular systems, so we don't have to just have one big canopy, which lots of people can, because we make canopies and locker boxes and all sorts of things to match every single vehicle out on the market. But yeah, decided to run with the 1200 on this one so I can take it off and put it back to the ute. Well, it's working extremely well. You've got so much storage space, obviously, for your, all your gear, but all those bags of rubbish we've been putting in there. We've cleaned up half the Glasshouse Mountains and put it in the back of this 200. It's pretty yes. good to see. Yes, and I right. must say those bags work so well. Yeah, what's it made out of? Is it alloy? Aluminium, mate, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you've kept the weight down. Yeah. Not, and it's still obviously very strong. I've seen the way you punted this thing around. No damage and um, super strong. You can't ask for more than that. No, no damage yet anyway. That's a go, all right. <laughs> well, I'll let you pack up, mate. I'm going to pack the rest of mine up. And I reckon today, mate, big tracks. Sounds good. One of our camp principles now is the two in and two out rule. That's two bags in. You fill one with your rubbish and one with rubbish you find and take them both out. Pretty simple, right? There's always space somewhere for an extra bag and with everything on board, it's time to hit the road. Pretty soon, we're back into the main playground of the mountains and pointing the Forbies towards ball bearing track. Now, these huge rock steps are gonna need some careful wheel placement with IFS rigs, but we can't wait to give it a crack. Well, Graham, you saw what Jesse did, mate. I suggest you try not to do that and um, do your best. This is, this is a big hill. It's way bigger when you're sitting down here looking up at you. Yep, it's not small, mate. And as soon as you get a vehicle on it, that looks even bigger. Mate, I'm gonna use the old uh, gently, gently approach for this one, I think, mate. Yep, yep, until you're over that, then you'll sand it, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't spun a tire yet. A little mountain My new D-Max is sailing up that lower section yeah, of the climb, good drive. but the big rock good step line. is up ahead. Whoa, wheels in the air. Oh, hold there, might even build this bit of the track up so you got a good run up at it. Yeah! He's done good. He's done good, he's got the air. What do you reckon, boys? You got a decent ride for me? I'm thinking. Up there? Drive a side up that one. Yep. As soon as you get the front up, you're going to have to go. give it a little bit of a squirt. Yeah. And just worry about the rest when you get up there. That's future Graham. Future Graham. Graham. Yep. All right. <laughs> just watch me canopy on this bad boy here. Yep. What's happening here, the D-Max is getting very close to that tree. It has no choice but to take that line. So what we're trying to do is build the line across a little bit. So that requires a fair bit of rock packing. We're going to make sure it goes up an even steeper section of the track. But that's going to, of course, leave enough gap for the awning to hopefully clear that tree. And fingers crossed, you might even drive this. In worst case scenario, it's a quick winch and I reckon he'll do the rest. He's done so good to get up here. 31 inch tires, two inch lift, brand new vehicle. And we're on one of the harder tracks in the glass house. Slowly. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Beautifully done. Have a look at that canopy, she's very close. Can you go right hand down? Oh. Stop, stop, stop. You hesitated that last. You just need to, if you just did it smooth, it would have bounced up then. We've got to repack. 
just about a subway. You good? Yep. Stop, 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 stop. That was good, but just not enough. Just, yeah, needed yeah, to give it about. Yeah, it's such a, such a fine line though. 20% more, I think you'll have to winch, mate. I think you're gonna have to winch. I'm gonna do that canopy in, bro. All right, I'm gonna rock pack this and uh, we'll get the runner out. I gotta say, I'm pretty bloody happy with that effort. I could almost have punted it, but I reckon it's not worth the risk smacking a nice new canopy on the trees. The boys soon have the D-Max hooked up and we're winching up over the top of the step. She might be short, but it's a steep old winch. Righto, time for the top half of the climb. Push this down there. There you go, it's a big old anchor rock. So we're trying to get out of the way to give Graham the best go up here because you don't want to stop on this bit of track. They call it ball bearing for a reason. These rocks are like ball bearings and you're skating on them. You stop here, it's very hard to get that traction back and that momentum going. Now, when the driver's not talking, you know that on yeah, their back off, and I'm back off. absolutely giving it everything to make it up this steep climb. And the D-Max is doing it. What a bloody weapon. Yes! That was a drive. Yes! Yes! If you own an Isuzu D-Max and you have driven ball bearings, please put a comment below, get in touch, because you and I are in an exclusive club. From moderate rigs to massive rigs, Ruben's up next and something tells me this should be spectacular. Seeing the D-Max go up, tell you what, that thing is unbelievable for what it is. I do not want the D-Max to show the 200 up. I mean, the 200 has just been phenomenal so far. But this hill is something else. I tell you what, Glacius Mountains, turning it on. Well, that's a bit of a re-evaluation on this hill. Yeah. Obviously, the big 200's got a big canopy. Huge, it's very huge, long. Huge. There's no chance, I reckon, you'll get through that line that no the D-Max and uh, Sooty and that tried. No way, no. So we're gonna try a completely different line, straight up this massive rock ledge. Yep. The boys have done an amazing job packing it up a little bit. Yep. And we're just gonna have it, give it a go. I if think you... he's gonna drive up it. It's so just if he spits those. He's got those... 35s and a big wheelbase. And lockers and, and... Um, He's not afraid to wheel it. No, so. he's not, he's not. Ready for you, Ruben. Take it away, mate. Good luck. I'm getting out of the way. This is dangerous. It's a big vehicle. Bounced that up, the front was in the air. How he didn't break anything, I've got no idea, but I am very impressed. <laughs> Could have done it any better. It just rolled up and like as it was going over the rock, the rock would spit out the back. Crazy! You were a madman! You were a madman! I got so scared. <laughs> I ran away and I got in the vehicle. Wow. Oh. You got about a oh, no, metre and a half of air on your front and just... Sent it. Didn't hold back. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Jesse, we'll get we've got four members of the yeah. we'll Senate Club now. <laughs> well done, boys. Oh, thank yeah, you very well. much for the awesome spotting, lads. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo! That was sick. Well, I, I shouldn't celebrate too early. No, don't, don't, don't peak just yet. <laughs> don't peak just yet, no. All right, mate, I'm not sure we're ready, but uh, if you are, take it away. <laughs> I'll give her a crack. Ruben's done an amazing job so far, piloting nearly four tonnes of cruiser up this track. But the last rock climb up ahead could be one step too far. Whoa! 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 Jeebus! Whoa! That's a noise! Oh, I need to go and empty something. <laughs> that might be a CV. Do you think? I should never have put the front locker in. Whoa! Yeah. Look at that, Whoa, an actual piece of physique. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! That's, That's one way to clear out. a CV. I would just give it a winch, because you're gonna, you're really close to this bank, your canopy's gonna come into here. That was a spectacular CV break, but it's probably one of the better breakages to have on a track like this, and once we winch into the top, a repair should be possible. 
That is a lot of four-wheel drive on a steep winch angle. Ruben, I'm glad it's you in the car and not me, mate. Still a bit to see they falling out. When these 200 CVs go bang, they go bang in a big way and explode parts out. But the good news is it's not hard to change them. Why won't it just break? Yeah. There it goes. Oh, that is one of those horrible noises, but he's up. We'll jump into the repair soon, but first, it's time to clean up the aftermath and get Nathan to the top. The last couple of vehicles up here have been very dramatic, and it is safe to say I am quite apprehensive. I reckon he's feeling very confident right oh, now. Mate, having watched everything that's gone on so far, <laughs> it actually sucks being last in the convoy. It does sometimes. Like it. Yeah, it builds it up a bit too much. Or, conversely, you can see exactly how to do it after you guys have all stuffed it up. So Exactly. Well, I reckon he comes up this line. Yep. He doesn't have the big canopy to worry about. No, straight Shoots up. Shoots up there. We'll see what happens, eh? All the way up. All right, let's call him up. Old Ruben's cleaned all the rocks off the track for me. Thank you very much, mate. So the key with this one, Nathan, is to get that front tyre up. When the front's sort of up, you've got to commit a little bit to pull that rear up. All right, so we're going left side. Go, you good thing. Gas it, gas it, gas it, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it. Yes, drive it. Oh, are you serious? Sorry, Ruben. Oh, no. Too soon. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Everybody, calm down. Bit of right hand down and backwards. <laughs> <laughs> a little right hand down and that was exciting. Not too far back. And a low. Bit of D. Yep, on that. All right. Give a little sauce. A little bit more even. A bit more. Yep. All then right. Sort of zig zigzag up that way. Okay. Oh, close. That's it. Oh, it That's is it. good. Oh, it hold is it, good. hold it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is you've done the easy bit. Uh, uh, so, as we've <laughs> seen. Now you've got to do the hard bit. When are you already, mate? Alright, let's do it. Alright, Nathan, time for the last part of the climb. Send it home, mate. Oh yes, yeah. pointy. She climbs well. Get up and bounce in the front. Yeah. Get on that rock and get up. It's just got no weight. Oh. Easy done. Would you look at that? That is a testament to what the right suspension and a simple lift will do to a four wheel drive. What a weapon. With everyone up, it's time to get stuck into the 200 CV repair. To get the CV in or out, there's going to be heads under the vehicle. Oh, so we're man. adding a second oh. jack to safety, and soon, Ruben's got all the broken parts Don't out. Break the rhythm. So, a little tip for 200 owners. When you do a CV, which obviously is going to be inevitable, don't have to undo your bottom ball joint. There's two retaining bolts that holds your main assembly here to your lower control arm. So just undo those two, and Bob's your uncle, look at that. Out of your way. Yep, there it goes. If there's one thing we've learned from our mates at Spares Box, it's that carrying the right spares for your vehicle doesn't need to be hard. And Ruben, of course, has spare CVs in the trundle tray, ready for situations like this. Everything is soon coming back together, and for good measure, Ruben's using a bit of brake cleaner on the calipers to remove any spilt grease. As quick as they came out, the tools are disappearing into compartments on the 200, and we're ready for our next challenge. It's been a real treat to wheel such a variety of rigs together out here in the glass house. And I've got to say, with the D-Max set up so well, I've been having a lot of fun behind the wheel. Brand spanking new D-Max, one of the things that I was really keen to nail from the get-go, right off the bat, was to get the suspension sorted. And a real key trick for that, because there have been some changes is what I'm getting at. Some of the uh, the lengths have slightly changed, spring rates have changed, etc. But to get all that correct, all we had to do was fit the entire vehicle first, then take it to Fulcrum with everything on it that we needed. 
in order to get that suspension dialed in. Now that we have, there's absolutely no tweaking needed, which is fantastic. You don't need to worry about it. I'm literally driving off the bat, brand new D-Max, straight off the showroom floor, a few modifications, of course, and the suspension just works. So folks, if you are looking for suspension, please do yourself a favor, do once and do it right. Take it to the experts, show them what you're driving, what you're gonna carry, your load rates, etc., etc. And if they're doing their job right, like the boys at Fulcrum, they will fit the exact right suspension straight up. We've got one more big item to tick off the list of our bush cleanup. But to do that, we're gonna have to head back up to the start of the tracks. Oh, I gotta say, that was some of the better drives I've seen, I reckon. On some of the more committing tracks. Mate, it was absolutely insane. Doesn't get much better. Ball bearing, all, everyone gave it a red hot go. Yeah, it was a breakage, but I reckon that was pretty insane to see. Mate, you gotta pay to play sometimes, and that's the sort of track where if it's gonna happen, it'll happen there. Yeah, absolutely. Jesse, how's, how's Daryl going, mate? There's just been a quiet achiever up the front. Actually, it's not quiet at all. It's a loud, obnoxious little achiever. Yeah, it's definitely uh, loud in the wheel arch area, but I tell you what, this thing surprises me every time it comes out, eh? It, 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 just, it does the work for you, really. It makes you look good. It's pretty good, mate. I'll, look, as, as much as, you know, that paint job, I think has been helping it go through, it is a capable little truck. Ruben, what about you, mate? Oh, mate, I think the 200 has done awesome. Like, a bit too much right foot, and I did that left-hand CV, but that's what you get. Like I said, if anything goes wrong, it's the, mainly the driver's fault on these things, eh? Mate, you piled of that thing absolutely sensationally. Like, we thought it was a big rig, and it's coming into the glass house, and that's some of the tougher tracks you'll ever point a 200 out. I reckon you might be one of the first 200s to ever even do ball bearing, to be honest. What about you, Nathan? Yeah, that had an absolute ball, mate. The quiet achiever down the rear end. I'll tell you what, that thing is very impressive. Mate, what a, what a track. Absolutely terrifying, not gonna lie. Uh, but this thing is very capable. Mate, that's a pretty big achievement when you think about it. We've collected a whole stack of rubbish out of the glass house, but you were saying before, mate, we're not quite done just yet. No, mate, I figure there's a popular sort of parking area, gateway, main sort of access road up here, and it's got a dirty old burnt out car on it, mate. What are you thinking, mate? We, what, skull drag it out of here? Nah, I reckon we can get smarter than that, mate. I'll zip into town and grab a trailer, come back out, a few blokes get ready, we'll uh, put it on the trailer, get out of here, do the right thing. Oh, it sounds like an absolute plan. All right, I'll um, come up with a bit of a plan how to get it on the trailer with the boys. You grab that trailer and together I reckon we'll get that off the tracks. Done, mate, done. No matter how many times you see it, it never fails to get my blood boiling when I see abandoned and torched cars left on our beloved tracks. And we're gonna do something about this particular eyesore. Now, of course, you do need to tick some paperwork to be able to recover a vehicle like this, but we've been able to put in place the permission to get it removed. Ooh, uh. It must be a Nissan Patrol, is it? <laughs> Pulsar, <laughs> Pulsar. <mate. laughs> Still a Nissan. As the boys figure out a game plan to get the vehicle out, I've got a trailer hooked up and ready. Not all heroes wear capes, folks, but you're right. That was some exceptional reversing. <laughs> well, mate, what unreal. We've just come up with a bit of a plan while you're getting that trailer. Yep. And I think it might just work. What are you thinking? A bit crazy. Yep. We're going to get the 80 parked up here so we can get on the roof. You well, follow me? Right, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> From there, we're gonna try and tie up a um, tree trunk protector as high up the tree as we can, yes. put a pulley block, winch goes up through the pulley block down there. We're gonna lift the front of the car up like this. I'm loving this. <laughs> I reckon. Let's do it. You're reversing it so well. Like you just I'll just go straight under. Straight underneath it. it. Yep, lower it I'll down. Lower it down. Re pick the back up. I'll drive back, back further. further. <laughs> Dutza, and we're out on. of here. And we're on. All right, let's get this hunk of junk out of here. Yep. And if you're responsible for this, Give yourself an uppercut. I like that we've got our tallest bloke on the roof. <laughs> when I can't reach, I can throw things at. <laughs> I'll get up on this bit here. Look, that'd give me enough. I'll get it on your shoulders, though. Yeah, no, that's enough. That's enough. That's heaps. And we just have to lift the front up, probably on a 45, and we're good. The plan here is actually to use the tree behind the wreck as a pivot point to lift up the front. And we've got a second winch attached to help navigate the back end. All right, we've got a pretty elaborate setup going on. We've got the run bar on a pulley block as far up the tree as we could so we can lift the front of that burnt out car up and that way we can get the trailer underneath. This might work or it might not, but um, it'll be a pretty good test for the winch to be honest. Let's see how this goes. Look at 
that, will you? The front is up and away. Okay, time to slide the trailer in. Step back, ladies. Like a charm, the front is on the trailer. Now, we just need to reposition the winch to the rear to lift that up as well. Just like that, we've got the car on the trailer. That worked out way better than we could ever hope. That is really cool. Well, that worked extremely well. I didn't think it was gonna work that well. Mate, but we just had a couple of good heads on the case, mate, I think. Mostly, I'd like to say it was probably my reversing skills. I'm the majority surprised you were able to reverse that far, to be honest, mate, without your wife. I've never, <laughs> happened, I've never <laughs> had before, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and just like that, another piece of junk is taken off our tracks. It's only one step, I know, but if we can do this much in two days, imagine what we can achieve if we all put our minds to it in the long run. Just be careful of the paint work, Ruben. Yeah, okay, mate. <laughs> hey, she might be a burnt out wreck, but she's still got a bit of weight in her. Mate, that is amazing. I can't believe that <laughs> that actually worked. Not only did it work, it worked an absolute treat. Couldn't have been better. There you go, mate. Some of those times of getting bogged and uh, doing those recoveries has certainly paid off today. Couldn't agree more. We got our angles right. It was really quite a uh, precise operation. Straight underneath, dropped it down. I reckon we rock up and go to the pub. Sounds like an absolute plan, mate. I'll even buy you a beer. Oh, what did you just say? No, it must have been, you must have misheard me, mate. It was a bit of static on the radio, I think. No, oh, I heard you. You're gonna buy me a beer. <laughs> Mate, I've had the sickest weekend, but two yeah. things I'd like to say. First, rubbish, just, it goes in a rubbish bag. It doesn't go out your window, boys and girls. Secondly, what a difference we've made. How much rubbish have we picked up? That's been the best thing, mate. Yeah. To go and not just pick up rubbish, but we had a bit of a mission to go drive tracks yep. and pick up rubbish. That was so much fun check, to go check. and actually pick up rubbish. Yeah, it was. And, and it's funny because we, you know, we met people down here and they were saying the same thing. They're getting, that's an excuse for them now. So if, you know, the girlfriend or the boyfriend said, no, I don't want to go out this weekend. We well, got it. We got to go and well, pick up rubbish. you want to save the world or not? Exactly. Better exactly. go for driving. I reckon this is really cool. It and is, hopefully Start this message gets passed on. Mm. It's a really positive thing, folks. Get amongst it. Pick up some rubbish, clean up half yourself. Places like this will stay open for years that's, to come. That's the simple bottom line. That's all it takes. Pick up a bit of rubbish and you can enjoy driving these tracks when your little kids are in the car in front of you. Absolutely. What now, mate? What now? I need to get cleaned up. This is yeah, a, bit, a, bit, a dirty bit weekend. Of That's been a dirty weekend of the other kind, mate. While you said something on the radio just before that really got me excited. I don't know what you're talking about, Doesn't mate. happen very often, but you said, I will buy you a beer. So what I'm going to do is we're going to drop that off the local tip. Scrap metal, they're going to take that, and I'm going to walk straight in and grab a beer off you, boys. I couldn't think of anything more rewarding than to shout you blokes a beer for the hard work we've done this weekend. Funny you should say that, because I could think of nothing more rewarding than drinking <laughs> that beer, mate. <laughs> well, on that note, mate, look, that's enough for us. It is. And um, I reckon you'll see us next time. Whereabouts, mate? Mate, Forward Off 24-7, we have got some epic stuff coming up. Oh. I'm so pumped. As you can probably tell, I've had an absolute blast. I'm back, boys and girls. <laughs> I'm back. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. But don't go anywhere, because we've got some really cool things coming up, like the gear we use, and also the favourite bit of the whole thing, yeah. you acting like a goose. Won't the be anything outtakes, of, me of there, course. Mate. All right, come on, let's go to the pub. Oh, come right. on. Your shout, wasn't it? Well, folks, have we inspired you all today? Where are you going to organise a bush cleanup? Let us know in the comments below. Well, mate, now's the part of the show, and I love this part of the show, going through some of the gear that we've used to make this trip possible. Yep. Now, when you come to the Glasshouse Mountains, you're going to expect tough tracks. It is the home of tough tracks. When you're driving tough tracks, of course, you could go through some really hard little obstacles, break some parts, yep. and all of a sudden, you're, you find yourself on the side of a track. you got to pay to play. Exactly right, mate. Now, getting the right spares you need for trips like this is really important to do it before mm. you leave. Now, Ruben obviously broke a CV, yep. had a CV with him. When I go anywhere off-road, I carry the spares I need in the back of Sooty. Yep. So if I do break down, I can get going again and don't miss out on too much of the fun. Yep. So spares box, I always get, hit them up before I go, make mm. sure all my spares are up to date. Yep. Um, but they don't just do spare parts, they also uh, do accessories.
accessories for your four-wheel drive, yep. aftermarket goodies, and everything you need for service and maintenance as well. So I hit them up just a little while ago, and I didn't think they'd be able to help me out. Needed a 24-volt alternator for shorty. Arrived in the mail. Really? Yep. Just like that? Just came along in the mail, just like didn't even leave my house. And it helps when there's one place you can go to get all the parts you need for your four-wheel drive. Yep. So sparesbox.com.au. Um, what, what are you, mate? You, mate, you might have noticed I've done some incredible driving on this trip. I've also done some fairly poor driving. <laughs> now, if you're going to come out to a place like this, I, yeah. you, you absolutely have to have a reliable winch on the front of your four-wheel drive. We've been using the Rumba out here, and yeah. some of us have been using it a little more than others. Well, I've noticed, mate. But I've that's noticed. Okay. It's okay. No, there's no shame in using your winch. And look, like I've said, if, you, if you're going to wheel hard tracks, look, even if you're not, yep. it's cheap insurance because if you do get stuck out here, some of these tracks are pretty remote. Watson's Road. Yep. No one's coming out there to help you. Make sure you can help yourself. Do you know what I like about it, mate? The fact that the wireless, right, you can yep. turn it on and the, you don't need a dongle for it. No, it's so just... I can just straight away, so if, if, if I want to yep. use your winch, I can do it quite easily. You can, but give that back because that's, that's my <laughs> winch, not yours. What else, mate? Well, mate, of course it's coming to that time of year. Christmas is just Ooh, around the corner. Yes. Now, if you're like me, you leave your Christmas shopping to the last minute, don't fear. We've got you covered down at Snatch yep. Clothing because we've got a stack of um, new mm -hmm. designs out there for females, males, you name it, singlets, hoodies if you live in the Northern yep. Hemisphere, <laughs> beanies, we've got you covered. Doesn't matter, but whatever you do, make sure you get some Snatch under the Christmas tree. This is my favourite design so far. I love this camo cap. Yeah, I didn't even know you were wearing a cap. Yeah, exactly, mate. <laughs> Top of my head was missing. <laughs> so, folks, you've got enough time for shipping. Uh, we've got express shipping as well. Yeah. So, whatever you're after, we've got some really cool designs out there and as you can see, we cover ourselves as often as we possibly can. Absolutely, mate. You, and look, if you don't know what to get, um, maybe you're not a fashion connoisseur like me or Graham. Yeah, that's right. You can get yourself a gift card, yep. you know, put that under the tree and I'll, I'll guarantee, mate, that's going to get you some brownie points, isn't Huge. it? Huge. Well, mate, I'm going to do what I always do about this time of every episode, sit back with a beer and watch the outtakes. Shall I start or do you want to start? Yeah, yeah you, you can. Start? You can. All right, I'll you, start. You've been away for a while. Yeah, okay, I'll have a, go, I'll have a crack at this. Ready when you guys are. Yeah. That was one of the more embarrassing claps I've ever done. So what are you putting in there? I can't do this. <laughs> Blooper. My, inside my car is coated in bark. I knew that. That was impressive. Thank you just reversed the trailer, you just got a bit yeah. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Okay, all, all you want to do is basically put a finger in there, I want to stretch that hole out, this is a fracco. <laughs> You've actually got a pretty good height crew, I reckon. Yeah, it all works. <laughs> yeah. It all works. How you going with like Jock and... Yeah, Jock's like up here talking We're walking the on the beach together, it's like your father and his son. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put stuff in that! It looks like a catfish! So basically all you're doing is just trying to widen that hole a tiny bit. So. Obviously, the wider you make it without breaking the sides, you're gonna be more. <laughs> Mate, I've had the sickest couple of days. Two things I want to say about this. Firstly, stop chucking your windows. <laughs> <laughs> Don't chuck your windows. Don't do it. Settle down. Oh, I'm still on. Soz, mate.